Okay, so this is a paper with uh, a former student of mine, Sefu. Uh, and this is, okay, the title. Okay. Uh, so what we do is uh, basically distinguish between two types of exporters uh, within the same industry. Uh, and export behavior of manufacturing uh, have been, the, so they sell either directly, uh, the firm selling directly to a foreigner, foreign market, or selling through intermediaries. Okay, so, uh, so that's, that's a fact, and I'll come to the data a little later. Where does it move? Uh, okay. And uh, so very few actually have examined export behavior which involve intermediaries, okay? And so in our model, there'll be both. Uh, they coexist. Both will coexist. Um, and there's a literature. Uh, uh, so it's kind of, uh, uh, in total exports, uh, share of high intermediaries can be as high as 41% in a particular sector, in a particular country. So wide variation between sectors and between countries. Um, but those are not sort of insignificant. That's what I'm trying to say here. And there are other studies which says about 25% a quarter. So it's still the direct exporting is the dominant force, okay? But indirect exporting through intermediaries are not insignificant. Uh, so this is more data, okay. And this is even more to just, I'm trying to uh, skip. Uh, this is a uh, slide written for a long presentation. Uh, and uh, it depends on the industry as well. Okay, not only country, but industry, industry, there's a lot of variation. And of course, the cost, as we know, uh, with uh, the new literature on international trade, the efficiency level of firms, and we are talking about well, our data will be firm level data, so the efficiency level of uh, firms also play a significant role. Uh, and uh, the medium, as you would expect kind of thing, small firms tend to uh, export through intermediaries, large firms directly, although uh, surprisingly also find that for the African case, our data, about 20% of the large firms, and large firm meaning firms with employ more than 100 people, also sell through uh, uh, intermediaries, and also about 17% of the small firms sell directly. So you find both, a mixture of both in terms of the size of the firm. Uh, and in past studies, people kind of analyze the export via intermediaries, export via direct exports. Uh, and, and also when you talk about policy, that export promotion policy, we kind of very rarely will find uh, policymaker distinguish between the two different types of exporters. Okay, so there's a one policy for the whole sector. Uh, and as we'll see, kind of it may make a difference. And uh, okay. We have we've done, this is with a different author, we've done a, a paper, with a purely a theoretical paper in Canadian journal. We distinguish between producers and sellers, and we find uh, interesting results I'm not going to bore you with here. And this is more literature, I'll skip. Uh, there, there are studies uh, which deals with intermediaries. I, I, I'll skip all these things. I, I'll be running out of time. Okay, so what do we do? So we, uh, a clear distinction between two types of firms within industry, and this will be a partial equilibrium model. Uh, firms are, as you already decided the mode of export. So this is not endogenous. We do another paper where uh, what they do is endogenous. Okay, here there are two groups of firms, and one group is direct exporter, one group is uh, indirect exporters but they're uh, selling in the same market, okay? So it's a kind of oligopolistic model with two types of uh, firms. Uh, and we are, okay, so I've already said extensive margin to, and, and 
<laughs> analyze the interdependence. If you subsidize one group, how does it affect the other group? Okay, and because it's an oligopolistic model, we can do that. Uh, okay, and uh, then, uh, for example, what is the role of competition among exporters? If you, the industrial policy, if you increase competition in one group, what, how does it affect the other group? Uh, okay, uh, these are the kind of issues that we uh, examine. What is the socially optimal subsidy for the direct exporters? That's usually the policy is directed towards uh, direct exporters. Indirect exporters are mostly a sort of unorganized uh, group of people. Uh, okay. Uh, the government subsidy only will talk about the government subsidy only to the direct exporters. It's a more sort of, uh, and the similar analysis, just the opposite will happen if we consider subsidy to the indirect exporters, okay? But we don't consider subsidies to both groups. Uh, it is discriminatory. And uh, we also see, do lots of comparative statics, which will be later tested in the empirical part. And we do so for two cases where the subsidies endogenous, that is optimally decided, and in one case where it is uh, exogenous, okay? And in the endogenous case, if you do, for example, a comparative statics of efficiency level of a firm, so it will affect directly the export performance, and it will also affect via changes in subsidy. It will affect subsidy, then subsidy will affect uh, export performance, okay? So that will, that will be the two parts. Uh, so this is a brief, I'll not go through the whole model and all the comparative trees detail. There are n number of identical direct mode exporters. Uh, competitive indirect mode exporters engage in the, the same product, okay? But uh, there's a uh, intermediary, one intermediary in our case we assume, act as a sole intermediary for the indirect mode producer. So there's a vertical relationship between the intermediary and, and the producers. Okay, so that's a vertical uh, relationship between the producers. And there's a, the same homogeneous good, uh, indirect demand function. Uh, the total uh, demand is uh, uh, total sales. Is there a button here? Yeah. This is the total sales by the uh, direct exporters, this is the total sale by the indirect exporters, and this is an exogenous sale by outsiders, okay? So that, that will be exogenous in our model. Uh, and each firm, exporting firm, receives a subsidy as the rate of S per unit of export. And this is the each one will maximize profit, I'll not, uh, the cost is quadratic, but the two groups of firms may have different uh, costs. So the efficiency levels may be different. These are the profits. Uh, by the way, the indirect producers, uh, this Q is the kind of a transfer pricing. That is the, that is the price that the intermediaries give to the, the producers of intermediate uh, uh, for the indirect uh, exporters. Uh, and Q is the price, okay, received uh, from the intermediary. Uh, and for the profit of the intermediary, of course, I've written somewhere, it's possibly, oh, the last one, uh, the uh, pi m is the profit of the intermediary. So it's a two-step process. First, uh, uh, this is the uh, profit, uh, the usual uh, first order condition for the direct exporters. Uh, this is uh, indirect exporters, of course, price takers. So they are marginal cost equal to the price they get, which is Q. Uh, and then this, the intermediary will take this as a reaction function and then maximize the profit and we get, uh, sorry, the welfare I should say, uh, because we'll be considering optimal subsidy, total profits of all three parties minus the subsidy payments. Consumer surplus is not here because we are assuming that everything is exported. Okay, so all products are okay. So all profits minus the subsidy cost. Um, okay, and, and the usual results. 
Uh, I'll not bore you with. Uh, competition, if you increase the number of uh, direct uh, exporters, it will reduce the output of all, of, remember the output of each firm of both types. Okay? This is one of the uh, kind of interdependence. But of course, N has gone up, so the total output of the direct exporters will go up and it is the indirect exporters which will suffer, okay? So the more competition among the direct exporters will actually hurt the indirect exporters. So. And subsidies uh, effects are uh, standard as well. And when we uh, optimal subsidy, uh, we find that to be negative. Uh, and so it, the policy would be to actually, the government, optimal government policy in our model would be actually uh, to tax the direct exporters. In other words, subsidize the, or uh, that what it means is to subsidize the indirect exporters. So a better policy, more help to the indirect exporters and uh, taxing uh, the direct exporters. So there are arguments and all. How much uh, am I doing with time? Uh, you know, five I've taken five minutes. Yeah, I, left with five minutes. I have left with five minutes. Oh dear. Okay, so I'll just skip. Uh, okay, uh, I'll skip all of that. Uh, okay. Uh, so we have uh, uh, the two kind of equations that we estimate. And the data, I have not talked about the data yet. The export of uh, Ayat firm in the Jeth country, sorry, Keth country, uh, firm I, sector J, country K. Okay, that's IJK. And the variables are uh, the efficiency level of the firm, okay, and also, uh, of uh, this is remember the first equation for the direct exporters. So efficiency level of the direct exporters, and also the efficiency level of the indirect exporters in the same firm, because they're all interdependent. Okay, and the way that we calculate I, I'll, competition is a kind of a. Uh, this is the BEEP data, the uh, business enterprise data. So they're actually asked about the competition. The firms are asked. Uh, they are also asked about the tax. Uh, are they paying too much tax, too little tax? There are about categorical variables, okay? So there are all these details. They're all in the paper. Uh, detail this is how we actually calculate the data. Uh, and so there are two exports of, uh, so identify the farm as a direct exporter, indirect exporters, and the two export equations. This is the log sales, by the way, because there is no quantitative data, it's the sales data. Uh, and we estimate uh, these equations. And, and there is also a sector level estimation that we have the tax variable, that uh, the firm, the sector J in country K, and this is the mean, so each firm is asked, is the tax too low, too high, there are about five categories. Okay, we take the median. Uh, in that industry from each, each firm, okay? So the median tax uh, burden of the firm in that industry. So this, the tax equation is sector level because the taxes are never uh, kind of discriminatorily charged to each firm. So the tax is the same, uh, actual tax is the same for all firms. And we do all that. Uh, this is the World Bank Enterprise Survey for uh, about 39 sub-Saharan African countries. This is a, unfortunately, this is a data collected over a period, but we have only one observation for, it's not a times, it's not a panel. Uh, sorry, it's a panel in the sense of firms and countries, but there, there's no time element in, 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 the, in the data. Uh, so there are about 200 and, uh, 2,300 roughly firms. Uh, 14 different industries and all the industry class, uh, they're all in the paper, uh, which you can find. Uh, so we only, there are a small section of firms, they do sell directly and indirectly to get both. Each firm is doing both. 
some selling directly some, a small one. Okay? So we exclude those, very, those uh, firms from the sample. Uh, and, uh, okay, about 22% in our sample are indirect exporters, 78 are. Uh, so we do all sorts of things to uh, define with the efficiency variable is actually relative efficiency within an industry of the different firms. That, that we did to correct for the prices because they are kind of cost and uh, sales figures. Uh, I'll go quickly to the, the regressions. We do all sorts of other country-specific and uh, uh, sector-specific variables, okay? like the regulation and all sorts of uh, variables. Uh, Industry-specific, country-specific, uh, and firm-specific, of course, there are, uh, there are all these regulation variables. And country-specific variables are collected from the WDI. Uh, these are some of the variables. Uh, So this is uh, some sort of sample characteristics. I'll skip. I'm going to go to the table. Uh, this is I was telling you about the distribution of firms across the size, uh, about ownership. Oh, okay. So this is uh, yeah. This is descriptive. Two minutes. Okay. Okay. One minute each table. Though. Okay. So this is for the direct exporters. This is, remember, the left-hand side is the level variable, uh, total log sales. So, uh, sorry, exports, direct export, total exports. And we also have another uh, uh, sales variable, just to uh, total sales of the firm. And this is the left-hand side is the export, direct exports, okay? Just to keep one level variable. And there are all the competition variable, cross-efficiency, own efficiency, uh, ownership, uh, the technology level, whether they have website or not, uh, age of the firm, the credit constraint that the firm faces, uh, the country specific variable and all these things. And more or less the results are <coughs> consistent with what we find uh, in the theoretical part, which I haven't discussed. Uh, and if we do that, the same thing for the indirect exporters. There are all sorts of diagnostic thing at the bottom which I could not squeeze into the, my uh, PIMA presentation. Uh, and the, similarly, uh, we also get uh, results like that. Uh, and the tax burden uh, on direct exporters, uh, <coughs> this is, remember, uh, uh, we, since the tax variable is a uh, categoric variable, and we take the median, we, just for robustness check, we also do the order logit uh, or OLS, uh, and the results kind of uh, similar. And the competition, the interesting theory is the competition variable, which is positive, and we have an interaction term, which is the interaction between competition and efficiency level. And the part I skipped in the theory that uh, the effect of competition on the optimal subsidy depending on the level of efficiency uh, uh, of the firm. Uh, and so that uh, we have an interaction term which is also consistent. I think that's roughly uh, what we do. Uh, yeah. I ran out of time, have I not? Yeah, okay. I'm done, yeah.